Joining me now is Dr. James Goodrich, the director uh, of the Division of Pediatric Neurosurgery at Children's Hospital at Montefiore, and Dr. Oren Tepper, director of craniofacial and aesthetic surgery at Montefiore. Thank you, doctors, for joining us. Thanks for having me. ask you, at that point, Dr. Goodrich, you had to stop. To have to stop at such a critical point, it must have been frustrating. And were your nerves rattled? What were you thinking? We were rattled. It was a situation where, as the procedure had gone forward, we were changing the blood supply and the direction, mm -hmm. and it clearly became more complicated. We had to sit back, reassess, mm -hmm. and uh, work with our neuroradiology team at that point. And this wasn't the first surgery. There were several surgeries before this, this one, right? No, yes, no. But this before. was a critical one. Yes. Right? Okay. So, uh, you're, Dr. Tepper, you're a crani craniofacial surgeon, right? And you specialize in skull re reconstruction. And we have some models here that you guys brought. You had to basically, and let me show the viewer what it is before you. So this is their, you can see the faces here, right? And this is how they were connected. There's one face here. And on the other side, there's another face. And they, they were connected here. And there's the brain connected together. So show us, what, what did you have to do? Because you had to make sure that they had two complete skulls, two whole skulls, once it was complete, correct? Yeah, and these models became very helpful uh, in the planning as well. So we had these throughout all the different stages. But when Dr. Goodrich eventually was able to make this separation final, uh, the job as the plastic surgeon and the craniofacial surgeon is to get things covered. And in the case of both these boys, we need to cover their bone as well as their scalp. So if you look at the model here, what we were able to use is the bone that we had to go through to access uh, the areas of division. Well, we have some techniques to be able to split that, essentially to divide that and create enough bone that I could use for both children. Right. And then for scalp, uh, it's very dangerous to leave, obviously, brain exposed, as you'd see here. So what we did is over the course of those previous surgeries, we insert, inserted some tissue expanders or balloons mm -hmm. that we slowly ballooned up, and that essentially gave us enough scalp to be able to cover uh, these children. So you have to make sure that everything, the tissue, nerves, everything connected and worked after surgery, right? But we understand that one of the uh, twins had a problem with his right arm, correct? Actually, both did. When both they woke did. up, because this area where they were conjoined, which you see here, mm -hmm. uh, we had to set, actually had to, yeah, we had to split through the brain. So one child had a hemiplegia on one side, the other child had it on the opposite side. And interestingly now, what, nine months later, uh, both kids are moving both arms very well. So nice, and Jaden, both of them had to, and we, let's look at this, look at the video. There's new video of them, of him. Uh, you can see, I think this is Anias using, there it is, um, using his arm. And you said they're both doing okay now. They're both using their arms. Correct. Everything is working? Everything's working. Pretty amazing. How do you feel? It was an incredible experience being a part of this. And um, fortunately, these, these two boys survived. And um, the parents have two healthy children who should live a fairly normal life. Have you, this is, I mean, this is pretty technical. Is this the the biggest or one of the biggest surgeries you've had to perform? Certainly my career. Well, we've been through now seven sets that we've separated, 28 operations, and all of them are fairly unique. What was difficult with them was the amount of conjoined brain and then the vascularity, the venous supply that we had to get apart. But in the end, it worked. I want to play, this is another clip from the documentary. Their mom's name is Nicole, right? Uh, the first time she held them after the surgery. Watch this. Meanwhile, four days after the operation, Jaden wakes up. He is ready for something his parents had only dreamed of. He can be picked up and cuddled for the first time. It's as if Nicole sees him for the first time. As a mother, you know when you hold your child, you know every bit of their face. Well, his face also encompassed Anais's. So it was my first moment of relearning his face. And he looked up at me for the first time in that way. And I got to see that he was reassured and he was comforted in my arms, which is something I was scared of. I was scared he didn't want to be held because they had never been held. And um, he mounted in and it was wonderful. What did you think? What was that like? Well, we saw the parents uh, so many times before surgery, and it's one of those things you take for granted, but um, the family, they had a system of bringing both boys in and putting them on the exam table and turning and twisting, et cetera, but 
uh, it seems so uh, trivial to everyone else uh, to be able to hold your child individually. Yeah. And, uh, and for mom to, to uh, bring Jaden over like that and, uh, and hand him over, uh, it was incredibly powerful. What about you, Dr. Goodman? Well, been through this now a number of times, and I can tell you it's the moment, without exception. That, that opportunity to be able to pick up and hold them as two separate kids is, it's an emotional moment. Yeah. Does everyone get a little misty? Uh, I think so, yes. Yeah, including the doctors. Including here. the doctors. Including Absolutely. the doctors. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. It's a pleasure, and thank you for what you do. We appreciate it. Uh, lessons will work out. Yeah, thank you. We've been talking about we're going to go surfing together. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect person to have with me. Thank you. I really do appreciate you guys coming on. CNN Special Report, Separated, Saving the Twins, airs tomorrow night at 10. Make sure you tune in. We'll be right back. IHOP has a fresh take on fresh fruit, juicy oranges and plum.